fellas, we have uh, hey, baby. it's lucky, lucky episode number thirteen, and uh, yeah. we got a special guest with us tonight. Yes, Somebody sir. who's been um, been doing some big things. Um, yeah. let, of, let me just go ahead and get to the introduction. Things. Yes, yes, he's an Alexandria native. He's yeah. a former All American. Well, played for Oklahoma. We're not gonna hold that against him though. But he played for Oklahoma. <laughs> Uh, played for the Buffalo Bills, and I don't have it up though. But he also did play, had a stint with the Carolina Panthers. Um, and I guarantee you, against him either. <laughs> I guarantee y'all have seen him or, or seen his influence and didn't even realize it. We have Mr. Nick Harris joining us. Thank you for coming on, Nick. How are you this evening? Oh man, first and foremost, a quarterback a couple of years ago to Alabama ended up going to. Oklahoma and played a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Two was drafted ninth overall, 147. I mean, drafted fifth round, 147 overall to Buffalo, and three years in Carolina as well. So, yeah. And I made a Pro Bowl ballot twice, playing out of position. Look at him. Okay, man. Okay, man. Hey. hey. So, Nick, when we, 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 Dane was talking to us, hey, we got to get this guy on. He started telling us stuff, and he was like, he was Ray Lewis. I was like, (laughs) <laughs> what, what what are you talking about? He was Ray Lewis. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he was Ray Lewis. He 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 on Madden. I was like, what are you talking about, Daniel? But I want to start here. First of all, again, like I said, thank you for coming on. Uh, you're an Alexandria native, and we're gonna get to all your accomplishments because, like Pretty I said, the, the list is yeah, the the list is is endless. But I, I want to start here. First of all, tell us about yourself, um, and and what makes Nick Harris Nick Harris. Uh, man, first off, what makes me me is I'm just trying to be 1% better every day, um, better than the man that I was yesterday. Um, secondarily, man, I'm just a product of a broken home from Alexandria, Louisiana. Um, unfit parents. I, I uh, <clears throat> emancipated, emancipated myself when I was 15, declared myself a product of the state, was adopted by my uh, my guidance counselor. And you know, I was a kid that was raised by a village. I ended up leaving Alexandria. You know, I was 16, went to Oklahoma. And the rest is pretty much history. Yeah. Yeah. So so Nick, you graduated high school at 16? I graduated high school. Yeah, I left uh wow. yes, I left 16. That's wild. That's yeah, wild. I left at 16. I, I took AP courses. By the time that I got to college, I have I was considered a sophomore based yeah. on all the, 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 the advanced placement courses and what that I've taken. Had over sixty five scholarships, could have went to LSU. But we're not going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> that was actually one of my questions. <laughs> yeah, that was going to be one of mine too. One of mine too. Uh, well, I, I'll go. I'll go ahead and answer it. Ultimately, whenever I was coming out, that was when Coach Saban had took the, the Miami Dolphins job, so you, they, they didn't have a coach. Ah, uh, gotcha. And Makes I didn't want to. Go, I didn't want to go to a team that didn't have a coach. So, and I wanted to win. So, yeah. Let me let me ask you this: What I understand the LSU thing, but why Oklahoma? Out, out of you know, out of all the schools you could have ended up at, why Oklahoma? Well, the truth behind it is I was originally committed to the University of Michigan because they had told me on being a defensive Heisman. You know, I was at the time I was number one in the Southeast, number three in the country. And, uh, you know, big, you know, Michigan has a lot of history. Um, I ended up you know, selecting my top five was LSU, A&M, Oklahoma, um, Michigan and Nebraska. And uh, to be completely honest with you, two weeks prior to signing day, I ended up getting double pneumonia. And uh, I was in the mm-hmm. hospital quarantine. They thought I had meningitis. Is that any other in Central Louisiana? Uh, the coaches from Oklahoma, they had just played in the Big 12 against the Darren Sproles uh, K State team. They had just played in the, K- in, in the Big 12 championship game that Saturday. They had took a PJ to come see me that, that Sunday in the hospital. And I was like, there's no way I could I, I couldn't go anywhere else. So that's what, that's what pretty yeah, that's much real. helped me. That's, real. Yeah. that's dope. That's dope. And yeah. I'll tell you this. You, you literally, um, yeah. No, go ahead, Pooh. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say you literally just answered my question. My next question was, <laughs> uh, what made you choose Oklahoma? But I, I, listen, I, I know you've done That's interviews love. before. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you got my notes, but you were answering everything before I can even ask. You. Hey, oh, yeah. you make my job. Eat. Hold on, let me, let me just get up. <laughs> and look, no, I, I'll ahead, say man. this too, um, Nick. Of course, you know we play for the same high school uh, from the same area. Uh, Alexandria, and I played for Coach Cook. Uh, he was my defensive coordinator, and he was yours yeah. also. And I can always remember, you know, uh, my freshman year, he would always brag on you, and he'd brag on Chris Brown. 
and uh, he'd always say, you know, no matter what, you can't take away, you know, they're excellent players, but you can't take away, you know, their degrees, right? And we know that, you know, you're, you're a very uh, motivated individual. And not only that, I honestly didn't even know you finished high school at the age of 16. That's crazy. But yeah. he would always say, you know, no matter what, Nick got a uh, kinesiology degree. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. always tell us that. So, you know, he stressed to us how important, you know, getting that education was. And then he would also have his choice words for us on the football field, too. And I'm pretty sure you you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. But, um, but I would say, man, just talk us through, you know, what it was. Because we know you come from a broken home. But, man, you you have the obstacles that you had to go through to get to where you are today. Just kind of give us, you know, what motivated you. And how did you keep going, bro? Because I know it was tough. You know, that, and honestly, that wasn't a roadmap. You know, nobody from from my looking at it, nobody in your life, unless I know different, did what you did. So explain to us how you, you know. No, you no, and that's and that's not even that's not me beating my chest. That's me being honest. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm a product of, of praying grandmothers. Yeah. That's pretty much what I am. I'm a, I'm a product of that 100. percent Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, is I was built. I built everything that I am, and everything that I aspire to be off of survival. Um, and I just knew I had to make it. I knew that I'm the oldest of nine, and I got 12 adopt. I mean, three other adopted sisters as well. And I knew that that I had to be that that lighthouse for them. That no matter how bleak it may have sounded or, or seen for me, that you know he kept going. This that and the other. So though that people may not give you their flowers while you're here, I know that people are watching. I know, and I know that people, you know, they might not tell you because of ego and pride and this that and the other, and and, and that's perfectly fine. I know that that's not a direct reflection of who I am but a re- direct reflection of who they are. And my job is to continue to be you know, a, a great son, father, brother, as I possibly can be, you know, a great humanitarian. Yeah, That's real, bro. That's real. Let me ask you this. How, I, you, after your NFL career, like how, how was it transitioning, you know what I mean, when you realized that, okay, maybe football is over for me. Like how, did, how, how do you accept that and how do you transition away from football? Well, let's no. now also let, let me ask you this, Nick, and I don't mean to interrupt, but yeah. tell us why your football uh, career ended. Because I know it, uh, it was injuries, right? Right. So ultimately, man, I came out, <clears throat> I was high, highly tired. I was supposed to be top 10 draft overall coming out of college. I was number one safety in the country at the time, co- collegiately. Um, and uh, I ended up, you know, we, I played the national championship game, which is one of the last games of the year, obviously. And then I had to go to Senior Bowl, had a award ceremony up for the Jim Thorpe, the Butkus, and all these awards that had the other coming out, All America. And then we had Combine and Senior Bowl. So I had a very, very minute opportunity to train. Ultimately what happened was, and if I went through the whole process of running and stuff, I ended up pulling my, this is a story that hadn't been told, but I pulled my hamstring at the Senior Bowl and pulled out and didn't play in the game. Tried to actively rehab or whatever, went to Combine. Um, and ultimately the, 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 the day before I ended up running, my agent was like, listen, you gotta run this in order for you to, you know, this, that, and the other. And obviously I, I ended up running slower than what we thought because of, you know, because of that, 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 that injury, but it was what it was. It was all in God's plan. So I ended up getting drafted. It's all about placement. So, it's, you know, um, I ended up getting, getting drafted to Buffalo, extremely grateful and thankful for that, that community. And, you know, also prayers for those families that are up there in, in the, in the 816. Um, but, and, uh, but yeah, I ended up having over nine knee surgeries, man. Um, wow. So, and in, in the four years, that I played, I had roughly four different coaches. Um, my body just failed me. Um, it was nothing I, and I was, and I called it for me, I called it, I was going broke, going for broke. Um, I was, I was going to give it every, you know, my, my philosophy is I'm gonna give it all I got for as long as I got it. And, and that's pretty much what I was doing until I couldn't, you know, I had to say, no, I can't do this anymore. At what point is it, is it no longer sane? Did it, did it turn into, you know, being insane? Yeah, I got you. So, so after after you know, once you got to that point where you realized you couldn't do it anymore, what like what's next? What do you, what do you go from there? Well, that's crazy because I still play football. So I, I literally went from being the guy that was in the game to being the guy that's in the game. So ultimately, <laughs> I make the game that people are playing now. So nothing stops. Yeah. So <laughs> how, saying, how do you how do you, how do you how do you get like how do you get connected with Madden to you know to do all that? How did that being come a, about? Being a great person. To be completely honest with you, there were people that spoke positively of, about me in my absence than whether that I wasn't in. It wasn't nothing that I did. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I mean, the good Lord was, you know, it took a bit of luck, and the good Lord looking out. But yeah, it was you know, it was kissing babies and shaking hands. I'm being dead ass. 
I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. Um, no, no, you, oh, no, you, you good. <laughs> as long as you ain't dropping the F bomb like some <laughs> fool on this show did a couple episodes ago. <laughs> over over Popeye's French fries at that. That was I ain't gonna hate Popeye's. It. I apologize. That was apologize. wild. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, the, my 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 very first gig was Best Man Holiday, and it was like a year out of me playing. And they were like, "Hey, listen, then you want to you want to shoot a movie?" And I was like, "What?" They were like, "Yeah, we're gonna do some choreographed football." And I'm like, "I don't even know what you're talking about." We shot that with Morris Chestnut, and I, Lathan, Terrence Howard, and then we shot that up in Buffalo and in, in, um in Toronto. And I was like, "Yeah, whatever, sure." You know, give me something to do. We went up there and we, and we shot that for about seven days straight. And then about 20 days after that, I got the check and I said, I can make this without having a headache. I said, run it. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I heard that. I heard so that. so let me ask this question. You were in the best man, Holly, because I saw, you know, so I, I know a lot of people, we, we jumped to it and say, you know, you're in Madden, um, this man holiday, uh, focus and, um, uh, the, um, American underdog, the Kurt Warner story. Right. Um, right. In Best Man Holiday, were you? I'm trying to figure out because I, I know the football scenes when he was trying to break Morris Chestnut was trying to break the record or his character. Right, um, right. Were you? Were you on the defensive it, side, offensive side? Correct. Or, so I was on. The, so ultimately, I was the antagonist to Morris's character. So all the all the gotcha. big hits in the beginning, that was all me. You know, whenever they oh, zoom wow. in and whatever, and they have, and they have that, that, that hero scene, whenever he look up, and you know, I don't know if you remember part of the movie where his wife had that, got diagnosed with cancer, and he, he took the phone mm-hmm. from the, 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 phone, the phone call from Terrence on the sideline. I was like, yeah. And then I, they zoom in to me, and they zoom in to him, and it was like, cool. It was like mano a mano in that moment, the hero moment. Wow. Dope. That's dope. dope. Wow. I love it. Wow. Um, so we do have a, a, a question in the chat for you uh, from, from our good friend, uh, Chance. It says, Nick, you played football in Brazil. What was that like? Yeah. Yeah. So ultimately, one of my guys um, who had played ball in at Alexandria Senior High, he didn't necessarily make it you know, to the next step. So he ended up becoming a coach abroad. So he coached. I moved to Italy for a year for him, to whatever, you know, to help him out as well. But I went down there, down to Brazil for six months, played down. And I had over about 100 touchdowns, 200 interceptions. It was amazing. <laughs> Bro, you no, were, so I, I see you were like that answered, catching. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that yeah. answered the question. <laughs> it seemed like you was catching the ball, you was throwing the ball to yourself, kicking the ball, yeah. returning the ball. I, yeah. I, I did it all. I, I, I did. did all. I did, I did all. see that, yeah. and um, <laughs> but when I saw yeah. it, I saw it on Wikipedia. I was like, he been in here editing. <laughs> 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 but nah, <laughs> uh, I got I got. Listen on my Wikipedia page. I listen. I've thrown for four thousand yards in, in three games. And uh, no, nah, on PlayStation, on PlayStation, <laughs> PlayStation. I took. Um. So no, it was um no. Just to, just to know, I would I would be remiss to say thank you, um, to that to that young man because you know he gave me an opportunity to to, to continue to play my career though that it wasn't at the level that I was right. playing at. So I do just want to, you know, give him his flowers as well, um, and just say thank you because you know that gave, that afforded me an opportunity to start to see the world through a different lens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dope. Okay. Hey, let, let me ask you this because go ahead, go ahead, Pooh. Uh, oh, okay, because uh, Danny has uh, we have a um, one our our listen. Dan, Danny in the chat says, um, "Being a great person is on you. Your choices." Uh, each day made you a great person that got you those opportunities love the humility which brings me to a question i have um you you have a lot of accomplishments under your belt um you have a lot of of I mean, you're a very googleable person uh I, i'll put it like that what 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 keeps you humble um because i know that at the end of the day man as quick as i got everything that i have it could be taken away um like you know every day i wake up with a grateful heart you know and i know that whatever i did yesterday really doesn't matter because I, to the, the what the things i do to, today could, could easily change all of those things so for me it's not about being humble or humility this is just who i am i stand 10 toes in my own conviction on a daily basis go hmm. go let me ask you this question too nick so i grew up in a, um, a fatherless home too single mother and um but i i want to ask you as a father um, cause I, you, you had your, your daughter was born your senior year of college, right? Or right before you went my, to the NFL. My daughter was born a week before draft. Yeah. A week before draft. So what is it like being a father? You know what I'm saying? As far as, you know, the, you didn't, you didn't have the, per, I don't, I mean, maybe you did, you, but it seems like you possibly didn't have the best father figure. Um, 
every day. No, I mean, I, let's, I mean, I, I, I did have an adopted dad, and I had some, I got some amazing grand grandfathers, you know, like, yeah. but you know, ultimately, does that take to the, the the place of that absentee ballot of a father? Not necessarily, but me having my daughter was probably my greatest creation. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And it, and if it did, and if I wasn't driven enough already, that added a certain level and or layer to my level of drive that like I got to make it. I have no choice but to make it. Right. So, but you know, to, but it's, to answer your question, though, it's amazing being a dad, man, because there's no manual. No, they don't give you they don't, they don't give you cliff notes to this, man. Thanks. We learn, we all learn, we all you know. I read, I read the book. They they lied. The book lied. <laughs> <laughs> you, better, you better, you better preach. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's so trial learn, by error, bro. It's trial by error. As yeah, a parent. my mom and my mom, who I consider to be my mom, um, who was you know a, a young lady who was with my father was extremely paramount in the learning curve for me because you know i was a a, sing, a single dad a rookie in the nfl and i'm just listen it was wild you know it was it was about eight to ten months in the beginning so ultimately man my mom you know ended up quitting her job and moving to buffalo with me to help and so it was like wow that's still wow that's hey real, nick how that's old real. was your mom whenever she had you my biological mom, naturally my biological. Um, yeah. she, she was six, she was sixteen. Sixteen. She was sixteen when she had me, and then my wow. father at the time was eighteen when he had me. Wow, mm. that's crazy. That's weird. All right, so I, let me ask you something. Uh, oh, go ahead, Aunt. go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just, I was just gonna say, I mean, I, I admire you, dog, for you know the transparency, the the authenticity, you know what I mean, the humility, and just you know from it ain't easy making it, you know from fatherless home and you know all that just just making it out of that you know what i mean but much less making it to the heights that you made it to and you know checking off some of those bucket list things that everybody everybody wanted to be in madden bro <laughs> did you actually do it you know what man, i mean i get and so that's I, get call, I yeah i get I don't, i'm sorry i don't mean to cut i get calls now and i'm like listen bro it ain't nothing i can do for you fam like i'm <laughs> i'm on the, I'm on the exactly, contract bro. for like 2026 20, and like listen i'm gonna do what i need to do but yeah. um no no i mean i think that uh the story is great the book's gonna be out here shortly yeah. But you know, and, and and ultimately, and that's gonna, and, and I'm telling everything. So if in the event that you, you listen, you better hope my CTE kick in. But doing the rather than are you airing it out now? Oh, I'm I'm airing it out. I'm talking about we couldn't talk about guns, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm airing it out. I'm talking about from from home life to to league life to 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 things that were said to me from teachers that you know, oh, you're not gonna make this. I remember it all, and all I did was put that on, you know. But all I did was put a battery in my back. Everything mm-hmm. that was negative that was ever told to me was put it because you didn't know. Like literally, this is a story. Speaking of at Alexandria Senior High, Coach Cook was our DC. Well, coach Stoker was our head coach. You know, he was a legendary coach in the state. Well, he tried to kick me off the team one time because he didn't even know that I had to go to work. I had four jobs when I was in high school. Jeez. So I would have to leave. So literally, right. I would have to leave. I would have to leave practice early because I was working. I had a five to nine. I slang shoes at Champ Sport. Yeah, <laughs> I was from five to nine during yeah. the week in high school and had a Friday night game. Yeah, I would have to leave early, and he thought I was leaving early because I was. I thought that I was more than. Mm. And my guidance counselor had to pull him to the side and was like, "Bro, you tripping? You yeah. mad tripping? Because you don't even know what this kid doing." Yeah. yeah. Mm. Salute to that guidance counselor, though, for real, though. A hundred percent. Oh yeah, Kelly Welch. Yeah, Kevin yeah. Welch, man, amazing. Yeah, and that was also okay, your so, adopted mother too, right? Yeah, Miss Welch. Yeah, yeah. okay. Adopted so we actually got uh, two two questions for you. I asked this first one uh, from again from our girl Danny. She says, uh, "Ask Nick with your journey through the state system as a child that had to emancipate and was adopted. Is there one person you have that was a great cheerleader or motivator in your life? Oh, just a little background. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Danny is a social yeah, she, worker. So yeah, she, she, is. she is. That, that, that peaked, that, yeah. you know, um, your story piqued her interest. So it, she, she not just yeah. being nosy. <laughs> no, you're fine. It is, it is what it is. Like each one teach one. Um, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, no, there wasn't really a, a cheerleader. I mean, I'm, I'm going to take a page out of Coach Saber's book and say, you need a cheerleader, then you're here for the wrong reason. Um, mm. But do I, did I have people that, that, that made sure that I was on the right track? Like I said, I'm a product of a praying grandmother, you know, like I said, you know, and, and things mm-hmm. that, that happened, the things that I heard, I picked up on. She, you know, my grand, you know, my maternal grandmother is probably the strongest woman I know I've ever met in my life. Um, yeah. 
and 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 some of the things that that I heard and and the talks and this that, and the other that that I had to you know that when upon my upbringing, I remember to this day. Gotcha. But to answer your question, you know, I didn't, it wasn't necessarily a cheerleader, man. It was a village. You know, it was literally I I was running through the tunnel before I knew what a tunnel was. I had people on both sides of the street that was that was rooting for me. You know, those that I had to emancipate my pro- myself, I didn't necessarily go through the actual state process. Pro- uh, process because i had people that actually stepped in and was like nah we'll take them for this long we'll take them for that long and i even had guys that were on my team that i stayed at their houses mm-hmm. and we called we, i had a group in high school called us of the fab fives you know chris mcgee lee foray jonathan neely kel smith you know and 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 three of the five were caucasian families in Elegance, louisiana that was that's literally separated by a road called MacArthur. Yeah. and these and these MacArthur families drive. Yeah, and these families took me in. They were like, "Listen, just bring a bring a pair of clothes to school today, and you can stay here, and you could, you know, that way the commute, that you know." So I lived. I was in the hood, literally the hood. Like you know, the cheerleaders, to be honest with you, was probably drug dealers. That whenever I did get off, <laughs> when I whenever I did come home, because my mom worked graveyard at the time, they were like, "Nah, Nick, you go home. You the son. Like we rooting yeah. for you." Yeah, yeah. that's so, right. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. All right. So uh the next question uh comes from Rich. We we never mind. He that's the Alabama guy. But uh he says transitioning from the league, what were those steps like? How did the retirement process actually work from the league? Um I had to deal I'm still dealing with with, with the with the legal process of legal ramifications of like trying to get surgeries with my knees and this that, and the other. Um I pretty much just jumped into the entertainment industry. I took about a year off. Um, to try to figure out what I was going to do. That level of slight depression that stepped in because it was like, man, as a guy, I I I tried to do, you know, I, I've described to be this person and achieved to be this person for, you know, 22, 23 odd years. Now I got a guy in a suit and tie telling me that, that, that it's over. Yeah. I was like, you know, yeah. and then I never I played the game playing. before. <laughs> never played the game, you know what I mean? But, you know, ultimately I looked at the situation and was like, okay, cool, what do I do now? And I talked to the Lord and the Lord said, I got you. So I got a phone call. And I, you know, I shot that first movie. Then I started shooting commercials. Then I just went down to Brazil for a bit. And then I came back. And then we shot Focus down in New Orleans with Will Smith. And I was like, okay, cool. This is, this is what it is. Um, but like, let's be very remiss. You know, the American Underdog movie that just dropped on Christmas Day. How many people you know got a movie that dropped on Christmas Day? I'm not Will Smith. <laughs> I'm just Nick from Ellen Landry. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I'm 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 my number. My name is number three in the credits in that movie. Hmm. that's big if you know what that means yeah. that's, that's yeah. really really big and a lot of people think that it would happen overnight or deep. no man i've been i've been doing this since 2013. right grind right. 2022 and i just got my first major major you know what i mean yeah so a lot of people it's kind of like the pregnancy you know a lot of people they congratulate you on the baby but they don't know how, long, how much you've been Mm, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's, that's real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's real. All right, All right. Rich, Rich has another question. Rich, Rich trying to, Rich trying to, I don't know, come <laughs> up tonight. Rich. All right, well, he says, uh, in the locker room, who did you witness as a leader who is not normally, I guess, recognized in the media as a leader? So I guess who's next, somebody next, you know next, that you play with. Rich. You got to word it better. Yeah, you got to yeah, word let it better. Let me, let, me ask, let me ask you this, Nick, about your NFL teammates. So I know you play with T.O., and you also right. play with uh, Marshawn Lynch. And I right. know you said you had a pretty good relationship with those guys. So right. just just being around T.O., being around Marshawn, man, what was that like? Because we, we know T.O. is a character, but not only that, we know Marshawn is not just a character, but the dude is, when it comes to money and business, he's very savvy. Yeah, I mean, those are my brothers. To be yeah. completely honest, these these are two of the cats that took me in as a, as a young guy that knew that saw the level of potential that I had or whatever, and was like, "Listen, we're gonna show you the ropes." Because it's like, you know, you 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 get to the league because you got all the intangibles, but you don't know everything. You know, the, the game move a lot faster, the money come a lot quicker. You can get to a lot of trouble real real fast. So ultimately, these guys took me in and were like, "Listen, bro, you look a certain way, you move a certain way, you go about your business a certain way, and we're gonna make sure that you keep it this way to make sure that you stay here as long as you possibly can." That's dope. That's real. So I don't care what anybody got to say about those two guys, man. Me personally, those those two guys pretty much made sure, as a professional, um, that's who. That's pretty much who I am and how I went about my business. Yeah. But you know, you kind of you kind of kind of answer what Rich was saying because the media never really portrays Marshawn or To really as a leader. You know, they always say that they you know head cases or problems, 
problem makers, right. you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, stuff like that. So, but that's I'm, what, but that's, but that's a critic though. A critic is somebody who can't do what you do, and they sit around and talk about it on their they talk mm. tics and Twitter feeds and this that. And the other. Yeah. We don't, yeah, we don't pay yeah. attention to that, man. So yes, yeah. at the end of the day, with if, if listen, they're gonna make you out to be a villain as long as somebody gonna listen. You understand? Yeah. Mm. Let me, okay, let me ask you this to kind of piggyback off that. Does does that kind of stuff permeate a locker room? Do you know what I mean? Do they do they hear the outside noise in the locker room? Yeah, you hear it. Anybody tell you don't hear the outside noise, they're lying. It's too, especially with now too many social media outlets. You hear it. But now there's the difference between us hearing it and not letting it affect you. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, you you go hear stuff. We've we've heard about all kinds of stuff growing up and trying to get to this level that people hadn't gotten to. You know, we we all understand what haters are or naysayers or this, that, and the other, but ultimately at the end of the day, it's like does it does it affect you? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, right. Well, so I guess so. I guess for me too, I do I do want to ask you this. I don't I don't know how much time we got left, but you played against Tebow in a national championship game, and uh, he played against me. He played <laughs> against me. <laughs> all right, yeah. So what was that whole experience like, man? Because I know you bust them up, man. We we was all watching it as a team, and uh, it was like that. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. So what was that like, bro? If 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 we scored twice on the one on offense. You don't hear it. You don't. You don't know who Tim Tebow is. Yeah, I picked him mm. off in the game. Gerald McCoy picked him off in the game, and we had the momentum going in the halftime. Halftime score should have been twenty-one to nothing. Yeah. So mm. I'm gonna leave it there. I'm not placing blame on nobody because you win and you lose as a team. Yeah. But I I played my ass off, you know. So. Yeah, you bought that game. Bought <laughs> yeah, that game. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to go back and watch that game. Then I'm gonna yeah. have to go hey, back. You ain't, you ain't got to look I, too far. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that. A, lot, a, a lot of people don't know where they were. I, I know where I was during that game. I, I missed the whole game. I was just like, oh, well, Florida playing. I don't Florida. <laughs> I, didn't, anyway. I, didn't, I didn't watch that game either. I didn't watch the game either. Live. I was following yeah. it on my phone, but. No, I watched, yeah. man. We had to we we had to show our guys some support. But I, I wanted to ask yeah, this question too, man. Um. So, of course, we know that OU, within the next couple of years, is coming to the SEC, right? right. You got a new coach in Venables. And you, you play for Venables, right? He's not right. new. He's not new. He just, he just took a sabbatical. He's the same coach. He, he's yeah. OU. Yeah, yeah. He, but new he head coach, though. I mean, he was he was in the head coach position when I was there. He was my DC, but I promise you, him he, no no decisions were, were made without him speaking with Stoops and Stoops speaking with him. So got it. he was already he was a head coach. He was a head coach in waiting. Got you. Got you. Got you. So what, what are your expectations? You I, I expect us to win the the, the, the big show within the next three years. Uh, mm. I like it. And that's, and, I, and, and that's against these the Louisiana Heat people. Let me let me We want we want Talk all this stuff. You, you, you got to come to listen, you gotta come to Norman. You got to come to Norman. And that first game that you play down in Baton Rouge, I assure you, I will be down the sidelines. Let's go. Okay, let's, let's go. Let's, 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 let's go. go. I like so, it. Let me ask you this though. How, we want how, it all. We want it all. Do y'all do y'all want? Right, let me ask you this. Lincoln Riley, <laughs> what's your what's your relationship or what's your thought about him leaving and basically ducking the SEC but saying that ain't what it was? But you could call it whatever you want. Listen, they gonna if they gonna pay you forty million to live in Los Angeles, go. I feel that. I feel it. I feel it. So you ain't hey, you no, ain't mad at him for taking the money. I'm not mad at that man. Bro, that man got a family fee, and he his job is to he went from he went from ECU to be the head coach at OU not yet SC. Hey man, I applaud that man. That's what That's you're real. supposed to do. That's pretty I mean, real. Listen, I'm not worried that. about I'm not worried about my university. We're gonna be fine either way. Listen, we 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 are in the mecca. It, you would be dumb not to take that gig. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. And three to four years, who's to say I might not be back there coaching? So who, you know? Okay, okay, I like okay. it. I like it. Okay. Well, man, I'm, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you, Nick. Hey, I know you said three years. I don't see it happening three years. I I wish OU luck because I'm I actually live in Tulsa, so I wish I wish OU luck, but uh, I, I don't see it happen, dog. That's crazy. Well, I hope you listen, listen. If you're a bet man, I take Zell Cash out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and these two right here. And, and poop, man, they'll bet you. <laughs> hey, three years. Three years. I like it. I like it. So, wait a minute. So, OU is going to be – OU is coming to the SEC in two years, right? Exactly. That's why I said three. You see, so, you, you, you so you're saying the first year they get in the SEC, they're going to make it to the – they're going to win it all. Bing bong. Dang. 
Well, it was good yeah. having you on. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I respect, hey, I respect, we we I gonna respect, have to. I respect hey. the confidence. I respect I like confidence. No, nah, the first the yeah, first yeah. time the first time OU in in Baton Rouge, we gonna we gonna be down there. We gonna link oh. up. Hey, with we them, Yeah, we bringing Nick back up. Oh, I'll, yeah, back sure. back I'll, up. Def- I'll definitely be there for sure. For sure. Yeah, for sure. We gotta bring you back, well, man. But. Um, I I do. Before we go, I got one more question for you. Uh, this one might be a little softball. <laughs> Celtics, Golden State. Who you got finishing it off? I got Golden State easy. Oh, okay. easy. Golden State, Ooh, Golden, okay. Golden State easy. I said, yeah, they shouldn't. Have, okay. if, if the Celtics are going to take it, they should have won two days, a couple days ago. I they agree with that. Off, I agree, agree with that. I agree with that. You, you I agree with that. that. You gave a I agree with that. That's, that's fair. I agree. That. That's, and that's fair. the thing, man. You have if you if, if you have your your head your foot on their neck, you got to finish through. Yeah, you had you had happening? home you had home court. And you you gave it yeah. back to Golden State. Man. I got it's, it's, it's hard. Them. It's hard to win two more in in in, yeah, in, in San Fran. Yeah, you got you got to win at least one in Golden State. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Yeah, that's, that's tough. Yeah. Man, shout out to LeBron. But um, <laughs> for what? <laughs> He did it. He definitely did it. He definitely did. It. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But no, nah, Kyrie uh, did Nick. it. Kyrie did it. All right, we gonna we can talk about that one later. We can talk about that one later because uh, Kyrie ain't. Hey, but Nick, what's out. what's the na- what's the name of your book, man? What's the name of your book you got coming out? Yeah, I'll yeah, let yeah. you know. I'll let you know whenever everything gets gets solidified. But ultimately, just sense. look out in in or around Christmas is when the book will be dropping. So okay, yeah. okay. Perfect, you actually, uh, before we do let you go, you actually are, uh, or if I read correctly, uh, there you're doing a lot of stuff to kind of help out Alexandria and other places and stuff. Um, yeah. So yeah, how, look out, man. June twenty yeah. fifth. Yeah, go ahead. June twenty fifth. I'm holding my campus free camp for kids from six to sixteen at Alexandria Senior High from nine to one. Um, well, all you got to do is go to the link. Uh, my link is thenickharris.com um, and, and have your kids sign up. It might be too late, but if the portal still open, you know, go ahead and do your thing. Um, also, the only thing we ask is, uh, you know, donations. Yeah. Um, that's the only thing I'm asking. If people want to donate, donate. Uh, How can we donate, Nick? Uh, I, can, I can send a link or I can t- put it in the, uh, in the Facebook portal and they let you know. Um, cool. But, yeah, that's, that's the free kids. They're going to get, you know, swag bags, shirts, food. Um, you know, you know, got a couple of guys that are coming in, maybe a couple of guys that we mentioned on this on this show. Yeah. Um, and it's gonna help, you know, just helping the kids, whatever. And it's 100, you know, at, at no cost to them. Awesome, so, awesome. And I've, I've actually worked one of your camps before, and my little brother, he he attended pretty much all of them. <laughs> he played, <fast laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, awesome camp. You always had D1 guys, you know, uh, highly professional guys that always came through, and uh, yeah. it was always free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always free. I don't believe it. I don't believe in charging the kids, man. That's crazy. Respect, so man. I'm gonna do what I can. Man, respect. All right. Well, again, thank you for coming on. We look forward to having you back. Um, yeah. uh, it might not, you know, it, it might not take three years, you know, but we'll, we'll you know, it, 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 you know, we, we'll see. You know, I hope, I, I hope, I hope Oklahoma get one before they get to the SEC and, and bring all that with them. And yeah. we can bring you off for that. And then we can bring you off when they get the SEC. The uh, well, I, listen, I when, when, how about this? How about this? So, when, so when we do win it, I'll bring y'all along. My okay. Show. Okay. Oh, okay. I like it. I like it. I like it. Go. We can like talk it. about how y'all. We can talk about how y'all just sit, sit back and watch us do what I said. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I'm, I'm yeah. with it. I'm with yeah. it. Appreciate you for coming on, though, brother. Appreciate nah, you. Man, listen, the, the 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 pleasure is all all mine, man. I greatly appreciate the opportunity, man. If I can leave one message, man, to anybody that's listening, man, it's always be a good person. For sure. Hey, for sure. Hey, if if that. if let me let me say this, if. If I've learned anything is no matter how far you make it, you know, so always be humble and don't let any situation slow you down. That's what I can yeah. take from this and, and yeah. it can pass on to mine. So I appreciate, yeah. you know, you for that. Um, uh, we You did mention that you're a father. So happy early Father's Day. And we might not always, <laughs> oh, we don't always yeah. get the, you know, you know, say, no, get we, get that, socks. You know. we get socks and t-shirts, man. We right. Come on, man. Hey, I, hey, I say this, <laughs> and I want to, I want to say this too, though, bro. You mentioned, you know, everybody might not give you their flowers, you know what I mean, at the moment. So from us here at the Golden Boot, we want to give you yours, you know, yeah. for everything you're doing and every, you know, on and, well, 
on and off the field, I say. But you know, c- continue doing what you're doing, brother. Continue, you know, making change and you know, impacting people's lives, brother. Definitely, man. Oh, sure, keep, man. I really and, and appreciate I, it. I'll say this too, man. Just keep making Alexandra proud, bro. Because I mean, we we root for you. You know what I'm saying? And you, I'm proud. I'm proud to say. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad y'all didn't leave it to him to make Alexandra. Proud. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dog. <laughs> Come on, dog. Oh, man. Come on, dog. But no, man, yeah, I, uh, no, man, I'm, I'm rooting for you, bro. I'm rooting for you. Yeah, we are. We are rooting for you. We appreciate for you, your legacy. Greatly and everything you're doing. Yeah. I greatly appreciate the opportunity, man. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. Nick Harris. Uh, you can catch him in Old Spice commercial. That's when I I didn't ask him about Old Spice. You know, send the mad. I wanted to ask him about NCAA too, man. God damn. Oh man. All right. I guess oh, we're just man. gonna have to bring him back on the show. 